Welcome everybody uh, to uh, today's event for the with the JCC Chicago Jewish Film Festival, which is entering into its ninth year. And also this is part of the eight nights of Hanukkah Film Festival across North America, where we're bringing great films to all of you around the world. Uh, but here we are based here in Chicago at the JCC, and we are going to be speaking today about Chueta Island, which is a film all about uh, the Chueta, which we're going to get into and explain what that means and talk about the Jews of Mallorca. And uh, today I am really thrilled to be able to speak with the uh, directors, producers of the film. And uh, they're here from around the world, which is uh, very uh, cool, interesting uh, for all of us here. Um, but we have here Donnie Rothstein, um, Felipe Volakita, and Ofer Lashevsky. Uh, and they pr made this, I, I think I butchered that, I hope not. Lashevsky. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> that's better. So we're talking about the film today. It is a, a film about these, what, what are called crypto Jews. And, you know, today you think crypto, you think of money or whatever, but crypto is almost <laughs> like secret. And, and I think that's where that word comes from. And I think it's a really interesting topic uh, to talk about. And, you know, there's, there's quite a bit here to unpack. And for, uh, it was a great film. I really enjoyed watching it. And I, I learned a lot, a lot about a community that I didn't know about, but are part of the larger Jewish community. So, you know, I guess I would start with Donnie, you, you, you live there, you, you know, emigrated to this, this, and you're really part of the community. What inspired you to make this film? Um, so first of all, thank you so much, Aaron, for, for having us. And thank you to everyone at the JCC Chicago. This is such a, a pleasure and honor to, to be part. Uh, of the film festival, and uh, yeah, we're so excited to to share our story with uh, with the world at large, especially with everyone in Chicago. Um, basically, I, I moved here seven years ago. I'm originally from New Jersey, United States. You can tell I don't have a, a thick Mallorquin uh, Spanish <laughs> accent. Um, and I, um, you know, I I always kind of once I found out about this hidden story that was kind of trapped in this island for, for centuries. I was blown away, Aaron, when I went online, you know, where you can find everything these days, mm -hmm. and there was very little information in English about this phenomenon, about the, the Chuetas of Mallorca Island. And I couldn't understand that. It's such a fascinating story on, from so many different levels, anthropological, genetics, uh, food even. I mean, there's, it goes so extensive. And so I just um, really had this intention to, to share this story with as many people as possible. And uh, was so lucky to, to meet uh, the co-creators of the film, Ofer and Felipe. And we uh, put our heads together and, uh, and you just were able to see uh, the final product. Well, it's a great final product. How did you all meet? I passed hey, the I... microphone to Ofer, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, Shalom and thank you, Aaron and the JCC. Uh, that's a good uh, question, and I think the, the, the main reason why this film was made is because, uh, well, actually I was uh, working on a newspaper in Tel Aviv, where uh, sometimes we used to write about uh, diaspora issues, let's say, and I got in touch with uh, Danny to talk about Limud Mallorca and the, the activities uh, related to Judaism that uh, were happening in the island. And uh, Danny started to talk to me about this uh, incredible, powerful, and unknown story, at least uh, for me, about the Chuetas. And um, exactly on the September uh, 2019, a lot of things uh, were about to happen uh, related to the Jewish uh, heritage of Mallorca. It was uh, the, uh, a month dedicated to Jewish uh, culture. And um, we thought that it will be an amazing op opportunity to, uh, to travel there along with my colleague, Felipe. We were both living in Israel at that time. Um, it was something really improvised and fast. And uh, I will say on an Israeli way, like, uh, yalla, <laughs> let's do it. 
Mm -hmm. um, without, I mean, with a lot of motivation, we, we of course did a great uh, pre-production work uh, from Israel. Uh, me and Felipe took all the research from Danny and we interviewed each uh, character before traveling to Mallorca. Then uh, we spent there uh, 10 really intensive days uh, filming all around the island. And we came back to Israel uh, with a lot of material, with a lot of emotion, but with a lot of also, uh, uh, I will tell, uncertainty. We, we didn't know uh, actually at the beginning how to connect all these important pieces. And in addition, and, and, and uh, to close my, my explanation, I will say that we didn't want to focus only on the past, one thing that uh, the Chuetas that we interviewed uh, told us, uh, to me and Felipe, while we were uh, recording, is that other uh, documentaries or people who came to film there always looked at them as um, something from the past and only related to the discrimination that they suffered because of being descendants of Jews. And our, um, our goal was to show them as something present, alive, with an incredible story going on, because some of them, as you saw in the movie, choose to return or to convert to Judaism. And this opened a lot of uh, debates and controversy that we wanted to, to show. And uh, that's the final uh, result. Well, I want to unpack that too, because you, you said return or, or convert. And, you know, I want to get into that, but just to, for people listening, if, if you haven't seen the film yet, and I think this is very important, what, what does Chueta mean? Uh, that, that, Danny, maybe you want to... <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll jump in with the, the, the yeah. most concise definition that, uh, <laughs> that we, have, we have found, uh, and that is the, the Chueta, uh, people with Chueta last names, because there are 15 last names or 15 family names uh, that are known on the island as Chueta. They are the Catholic descendants of the Jewish conversos of Mallorca Island. They're only from Mallorca Island. They're not from Ibiza, which is next door, Menorca, Barcelona. Uh, they're only gonna be coming from this island. And if you have heard of the derogatory term Marrano before, Aaron, you know, this, mm -hmm. it's, this is Spanish for um, crypto Jew or converso. In Hebrew, it's B'nai Anusim, children of the forest is what that means. Um, Marrano means like coming from pig, right? Because they were forced to eat pig in public uh, to see whether they were still practicing Judaism or not. It's anyone who has Jewish roots, basically, uh, but is a Christian. Uh, and so Morano is a derogatory term. And for a very long time, Chueta was a derogatory term. It comes from Catalan. It's the, the, the language that is spoken here in Mallorca is Catalan. Uh, the dialect is Mallorquin. And uh, it comes from the word chuya, which means bacon or pork, uh, or jueu, jueto, like you little Jew. You know, again, mm -hmm. derogatory term. So jueto and chueto sound very similar. I mean, do you think that for some, I think it's, it's almost still a derogatory term within Judaism uh, for other Jews to call people Chueta. But do you think that some of the people there who are Chueta um, feel, wear it as a sense of pride? Felipe, you, you wanna take the- Yes, I think so. It's, it's one of the, the points that you're touching in the movie that uh, they are like, a, bringing this uh, this word chueta with with proud it's not a prerogative they are proud they are chueta they're proud they're some that they're jewish and uh, i think I, in what what i saw there what i listened there yeah. that with the people that we talk it's not a prerogative term anymore for them today yeah do they do they support you guys making this film do they want their story being shared? Um, I, 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 I can tell uh, actually that, uh, yes, we were really welcomed and we felt uh, embraced by the, uh, by the Chuetas. I think that uh, from the first moment that we approached them and also the fact that we came from Israel, uh, I don't know, helped us to, to make uh, this connection. 
And in addition to, to the answer that Felipe gave now uh, related to, to the Chueta identity and the fact, it's something really new because uh, a few year, uh, generation, years or one generation before, they were still uh, being uh, uh, suffering this uh, stigma of being Chuetas. And one of the questions that we wanted to ask to them and, uh, and to, to the public is if there's something like a Chueta identity, uh, which is not clear. You must understand, Aaron, that there are thousands of people in Mallorca uh, with these uh, 15 uh, family names, and the vast majority of them, they, are, they, they don't have a clue about their past, about being descendants of crypto Jews. They are completely disconnected to the, this story. There was a huge taboo uh, in Mallorca. We need to understand that it's an island. Uh, so here, uh, the, uh, the, the phenomenon of anti-Semitism was more cruel even than in, um, in, um, in Sefarat, in Spain. So there was, we felt that there was this taboo. And now uh, some of the characters that uh, we interviewed in the movie, which are central uh, in this uh, story of uh, uh, showing the, uh, the story of the Chuetas, they are starting to talk proudly about their origins, about what this, they suffered and what it means for their identity. But uh, a few years ago, it, it was still a closed issue. I grew up in Spain uh, and here uh, in all our education system, we don't, I mean, I never heard about the Inquisition, the Marranos, really? the Chuetas, the suffering, the expulsion of, of the Jews from uh, this land. So this is a really important issue, and, and I think that it's important, or, or we hope that this uh, story reach to the uh, general public here in Spain, uh, all around the globe, because uh, it's not only an issue of the Jewish or people related to, to Judaism. No, it's, it's not. But I think when you even offer, I mean, specifically for, you know, being a journalist in, uh, in Israel, uh, I mean, do you see a similar type of um, relationship between, let's say, the Ashkenazic Jewish community and the Ethiopian Jews who came over? Uh, I think that uh, in, in our documentary, uh, there are some conflicts that you can uh, build uh, uh, parallelismos, uh, which, are, which are really uh, similar to what we experience uh, a, a, between the different, different traditions of uh, Judaism in Israel. Of course, uh, located in, in Mallorca and these differences between uh, Sfaradim, Ashkenazim, and of course, uh, the Chuetas who nowadays are in the forefront of the community, it created some um, tensions over there. I mean, uh, it's, uh, and, and for, for us coming from Israel, uh, I think that this helped the, the issue of living in Israel helped to me and Felipe to understand these um, this, uh, uh, tensions going on uh, because sure. of the different traditions, languages. Also, there's a uh, uh, nat uh, nationalistic uh, identitarian issue going on there between the Catalans or the, and the more uh, Spanish um, uh, Jews, let's say. So, of course, I mean, we can... Mm -hmm. uh, Related. Related. It's similar, yes. And, and, yes, and, I, I, sorry, Daniel, just want yeah. to compliment. I, I grew up in the in the in Rio de Janeiro, the Rio de Janeiro community, Jewish community, and also the conflicts that we live there is the, very similar to the conflicts in the Mallorca community, but smaller. So it's like a microcosmos of what I think every Jewish community uh, lives and uh, deals with. You, you're saying with, within the Jewish community in Rio de Janeiro or within just different communities of people within Rio de Janeiro and Brazilians? No, no, in the Jewish community, like the, the different uh, opinions and uh, forms of, of uh, practice Judaism is very uh, similar. And we have, we have a community, we have the conflicts in the, the Rio de Janeiro, probably in Chicago and in, uh, in Mallorca. Uh, what do they say? Two Jews, three shuls? <laughs> Exactly. We, we listen to this, this sentence like uh, five times in the, in the shootings. <laughs> so the same. 
And, and, and sure. I just want to add, Aaron, it's, it's great that we're talking about this because, yeah, part of our film is to show, look at this tiny Mediterranean island, you know, no one's ever heard about. And look how exactly they're struggling with the same issues that any other Jewish community is struggling with all over the world. Now, with the Chueta people, though, the people who have these Chueta last names, you know, you asked about, is it similar to white uh, Ashkenazi um, kind of perhaps superiority uh, in certain places to, to, as you mentioned, the Ethiopian community in Israel? What I, what, what I thought was astounding about the Chueta people is that you have to understand, they feel that they are as Mayorkin, if not older Mayorkin, than their neighbors. They speak the same language. They uh, you know, look the same way. They're the exact same people. And they're just as Catholic as the other Catholics for centuries. The only difference is that they have a different last name. You know, one of the things that struck out and actually, unfortunately, it was left on the cutting room floor because we weren't able to include everything we wanted to include. Sure. Is this wonderful interview that we have with Jacqueline Tobias, who is uh, someone who is uh, French originally. She's Jewish and she's been living in Mallorca since the 60s. She told us a story about how she married a Mallorca man who's not Chueta. And in the 60s, maybe this was even the 70s now, when he brought his French Jewish girlfriend home to his Mallorca Catholic mom, and said, hey, mom, this is my, my new girlfriend. She's from France and she's Jewish. You know, because of this awful history that you learn about in the film, you would think there'd be a big problem with that fact. Her right. response was, oh, thank God she's Jewish. Oh, thank God she's not Chueta. <laughs> Which just goes to show you that she would prefer her son to marry or to be with a, a Jewish woman from another country who's completely different from her son than the girl next door who's Catholic and speaks the same language and their family is from the same island, but just because they have a different last name, it was a huge issue, a huge stigma to, for this intermarrying to go along. And this, is, this marrying between the 15 families that has happened through centuries is also phenomenal when you think about it from an anthropological perspective. It is. It's interesting. And it's so similar, I think, to if you look at it to other communities across the world. I mean, you, you think about like what's happened in Rwanda or even like in the Balkans of what's happened with different fighting, even though people are similar. I mean, Felipe, you've reported in, in the Balkans. I mean, do you see like a lot of the same ways that people like uh, have conflict and, and how did they resolve things? Exactly. 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 Oh. When, when I, I shoot a, a, a TV story for about the, the refugees, they're living from a, from a Iraq and Afghanistan and Iran going to, to Europe and uh, you deal with uh, like a drama, real people drama, it's the same, it's like uh, no sense at all. Yeah. And no, it is, it is no sense at all, but, and it's, you know, people have different labels and, and, and things like that, but, and it's hard to really try to bring the community together, but I love, and by the way, I thought that the movie took place over a longer period of time. I mean, you filmed in 10 days. Like <laughs> I, I felt like I was there for, I really, I think that's just a testament to the job you guys did on this. And it, it it's great. Cause you, I really feel like I got to understand the history and the current and the future. But um, Donnie, I mean, you're, you're trying to really build this community in a different way to kind of buck the trend of typical communities and bifurcation. Is it working since we saw this? And, and how did COVID affect your community building? Wow. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> two, 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 two uh, profound questions there. Um, you're absolutely right that, uh, you know, a lot of people um, tell stories or, or shoot films to to spread the news, to, to, to share what's going on, where this project, I didn't mention before, had a very introspective inve investigative approach. I mean, we're so, I, I feel so considerably lucky to have Felipe who brought the incredible uh, cinematic uh, uh, beauty that you see to the film, and Ofer who has uh, years of journalistic ah. experience. You know, we ah. were, th there was a very cr like, uh, cr important creative decision that we took that I was not going to be involved in any of the interviews because we really wanted, I, you know, I wanted to know what did, what did the leaders of this Jewish community, ex-leaders and future leaders, what do they all think about 
you know, the, the cultural association where we're doing events uh, to the non-Jewish public. What do we think about Orthodox Judaism? What do we think about uh, secular Judaism? You know, we wanted to get all these uh, information out to, to figure out what could be the future. And is it working? The answer is yes, because uh, what, what you don't know behind the scenes is that uh, the character Mikel Segura, the, the one who's in front uh, of the ocean behind him in all of his mm -hmm. interviews, and uh, you know, very important saying that he always felt Jewish and that he didn't want to convert, he wanted to return, you know. Um, him and I, for the last two years, while we've been editing this film, have had a super huge clash because he fought tooth and skin, tooth and nail, to return to a Judaism, the Orthodox Judea, Jewish way, you know, halachically. And here comes uh, uh, an American tourist, let's call it, who just landed here and trying to bring perhaps a more JCC approach, right? One big tent, hey, let's all come in together and you could pray however you wanna pray, but let's all be together. Well, he wasn't, he was very, he felt threatened to be honest by that, hmm. you know? We don't want this to turn into a social club. We don't want it to just be, uh, he he ha ha's, you know, we, we want to practice Judaism. We want to, we want minion every, you know, Friday without fail. You know, we want to take it, you know. And, and so, so this was some uh, inner conflicts that we were having uh, between two leaders of the community, myself and himself. And I think once he actually saw the film and realized that we really want to push and encourage the Chueta story and build a community around that tragic history and have that something that we can all share in, um, he's now our, our greatest uh, supporter, taking our film around Mallorca and showing it to many different uh, city halls and towns, which is which is really nice to see uh, and 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 feel. Um, the second question about the COVID uh, situation was also pretty incredible because we immediately took to Zoom. We started this thing called Shazoom Shabbat on 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 Zoom, and every Friday it was amazing because we did breakout rooms of Catalan, English, and Spanish. And we had 60, 70 people, some people, times from all over the world that were joining us for Shabbat. And suddenly our tiny community that did not have a rabbi and didn't have access to a lot of music or religious teaching, like we're a small community. We don't have those tools here. We suddenly were like, you know, hmm. we had rabbis and cantors from LA, from Taiwan, from South America, like joining us on our Zooms. and. It was a really, really beautiful uh, experiment. The other thing I'll share, I hope I don't get in trouble. Uh, we're going back over a year now for that Rosh Hashanah high holidays, where in Spain, at least, you were not, it was illegal. You could not have reunions of more than 10 people. Um, so suddenly we had a Rosh Hashanah uh, event in a farmhouse owned by one of the Israeli families of our community, outdoors, of course, but Technically, it was, at that time, it wasn't really uh, kosher, if you know what I mean. And so suddenly, <laughs> I had this vision of, wow, 1670s, there's crypto Jews secretly having a Yom Kippur service and, and, and sneaking away from the Inquisition. Cut to 2020, there are still secret Jews having a secret Rosh Hashanah farm Seder, Rosh Hashanah Seder, trying to maintain this community alive uh, at all costs. So it was pretty interesting to to do the parallels. Quite the parallel. Oh my God. <laughs> that is interesting. Uh, do you still have the Shazooms? You know, we, we, uh, we really wanted to get back to in person. So we did the Shazooms for about six months and now we, um, no, the synagogue is back open. We were able to renovate the synagogue while we were under COVID while it was closed for a year. So that was beautiful. Yeah. And we just started a week ago. This is very exciting. Uh, my wife, Carla, organized the first ever like youth program with two Israeli teachers. Uh, I, I, I actually haven't gotten even to share the news with Ovir Felipe yet. Uh, just this past week, this Sunday will be our second time meeting. And one meeting is in the synagogue and another Sunday they're going outside uh, to do hiking and, and stuff. And it's gonna be teaching Hebrew and teaching Jewish holidays. And so we're really, really excited. The other huge news, which I think you see at the end of the film actually, is that we have uh, been able to hire a rabbi uh, since this past June, and it's the rabbi is one of two rabbis who have Chuetta descent. They're originally Catholic from Mallorca who have returned or converted, uh, made Aliyah. They both live in Israel. So this one rabbi, Rav Nisan, comes once a month for 10 days, 14 days, something like that, to, to be with our community. And he just arrived uh, yesterday. So he's with us for the Shabbat. That's wonderful. Well, I mean, so many different things that uh, you all have had to work with in, in terms of, you know, 
sharing the story and working together and uh, doing this during COVID. How did you guys produce this in the, I mean, I assume you weren't able to get together. <laughs> and def definitely it was uh, the, the main challenge, I, I will say, and sometimes really difficult. Uh, me and Felipe, we were together in the edition room in, uh, in Felipe's uh, house near Natanya in Israel. Uh, Danny was in Mallorca. So at the beginning, we made the transcription on, of all the materials. And then before or start to editing, we understood that we will need some uh, for, uh, extra help. So we, we Marta Hierro, an amazing uh, uh, scriptwriter, joined the team. And from there, it was like a Zoom marathon, a never ending Zoom marathon. Sometimes not, not easy to handle because it's not, yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, professional teams have, have, have I, sorry, have um, all the resources and they are, and they are used to sit in the same uh, room. And for us, it was like a constant sending of materials, checking, uh, rechecking, uh, discussing, going back, going forward. And uh, sometimes we felt like this is, we are like climbing a never ending mountain and we don't see the end. Uh, being, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, that's true. I mean, uh, and, and of course, personally and emotionally, we were all in the middle of the pandemic. I don't know in the US, but in Israel was really tough. In Spain yeah. also, it was uh, not easy. And we were all emotionally, personally, uh, really shocked living through hard times with our families. And we managed to, during these hard times, to get some extra time and, and effort to invest in this uh, project that we, all of uh, three of us, uh, believed in. And I think that this passion and motivation um, is re reflected in the final result. And, and, and I will, in addition to Marta, the scriptwriter, also uh, another br brilliant uh, professionals joined us uh, for the animations, edition, music we uh, they composed original uh, soundtrack for our movie which is a really talented um, uh, soundtrack and that adds an amazing uh, rhythm to the to the film so all of these people were really touched by the story they didn't hesitate to join us and do our best and uh, we are really thankful to all of them and uh, i think that it's a great uh, success that we managed to finish uh, this documentary with uh, these uh, terms let's say well, i'm sure that there's a lot that you can take away from this experience and and do better for whenever you you want to do in the future because you're basically building the prototype of how to do a film remotely with you know many people around the world and Last year, I got to interview a lot of different filmmakers for films that they were doing, and they're trying to promote it. And you couldn't go on a speaking tour or film festival or anything like that. And that was tough enough. And I would ask people, how do you do it? But here, this is, you're a group of people that actually made a film during the pandemic. And I really applaud you for that. Do you guys plan to go on the road and go to film festivals and speak in person? Or do you think it's mostly going to be virtual? Well, uh, I guess it's worth saying that Felipe, you have some news to share. You, your your, your uh, upcoming months might be a little challenging uh, to travel. No, that I'm saying you're, uh, Felipe just welcomed uh, new life into this world. So he's, uh, to travel <laughs> is going to be tricky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't know when, when I'm, I'll be able to travel, but uh, hopefully, hopefully next year, 2022, we can, uh, we can travel with the movie and it's my... One of my dreams also to, to show, to be with the people. It's very nice to make a Q&A by Zoom and to, to share the movie and to show the movie. But uh, in person, it's priceless, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I, I will add one, one thing, uh, Aaron. Uh, we are already doing uh, presential uh, screenings. Danny made some, uh, some of them in Mallorca. Actually, I joined Danny uh, in, in, in two screenings there. Yesterday, we made... Uh, our first screening in Barcelona. I'm actually based in Barcelona with my family. It was amazing at the heart of the of Barcelona's Jewish quarter. Uh, people uh, generally felt uh, really engaged with the story, surprised, and we have uh, 
a really welcoming uh, reaction uh, from all those screenings. We are planning, I mean, also all these uh, Jewish film festivals that are happening uh, like yours in, in the States. Also, soon we will be in Madrid. We will uh, feature the film in, in, in a television channel that soon we'll announce. And uh, I think that this uh, next year, uh, a lot of things are gonna happen. And, and, and we all hope to be together there and to be presential, which is, uh, I mean, it's uh, really I, I important. Want, I want to meet uh, Dani again. I want to meet Dani again. I just <laughs> met Dani in the, in the shooting and we make a movie together. <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, at least you got to meet I'm missing, him. I'm missing these guys. I'm missing these guys. <laughs> I'll tell you. And we what, want all of our children to meet together, too. We want to have a whole gun, you know, a whole kindergarten uh, together. <laughs> That'd be a lot of fun. No, I've gotten to meet people who I've only met digitally over the past year. And it's just amazing when you actually get to be in person. It's just a, a totally different flavor. <laughs> and I hear you, Ofer, when you're saying how hard it was. I mean, especially just in terms of everything going on with the pandemic. But to be on Zoom all the time or not to be able to be there with your team, it's there's there's magic that happens when you're there in person. Of course, so. it's, it's like uh, I, 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 it's comp for me, I also play music. I feel it's exactly the same. Like when you are with your band, you play guitar. The other is with drums, the bass. I mean, you are all together in the same rehearsal room. You feel the vibe. So it's the same. And also yeah. in terms of uh, uh workflow it's much harder like to finish the session with felipe to export to send to receive to check i mean all, all of these issues i we hope that is the all the first and only movie that we do uh, via <laughs> via zoom but uh, i think that uh, after all we we succeed as i said and we are really really happy <laughs> and proud and it's also a huge uh, teach uh, learning for for ourselves i think i i also want to add ofer remember that uh i think our our yeah our first screening our first private screening where we showed the uh characters that were in the film all the people that were in the film was in mallorca i was there live of course here and and what we did was we put on the big movie screen uh the zoom of ofer and felipe but of course, everyone could see Ofer Felipe, but Ofer Felipe couldn't see the audience. So it was, it must have been very uh, interesting experience for Ofer Felipe. Awful, <laughs> awful, completely awful. I mean, we only cruel, saw cruel. black screen. <laughs> wow. Well, this is a terrific movie. I thank you all for joining us. Uh, if people want to learn more about the movie, where should they go? So if you can visit uh, uh, chuetaislandthemovie.com. Now, the way you spell Chueta is tricky. It's X-U-E-T-A, all right? So, um, yeah, X-U-E-T-A, Chueta, islandthemovie.com is our website uh, where you can get on our, our mailing list and you can get updates of when we're doing screenings, um, online screenings, in-person screenings. And also, we are all over uh, social networks. We have uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And Ofer, if I'm not mistaken, it's, it's uh, like, Strudel, uh, the Ed sign, Chueta Island, right? Yes, on, on the three of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, it's great. Well, I, I love the film. I hope everyone enjoys it and learned a lot today. And I, I'd love to meet you guys in person at some point. Um, but thank you to the audience for, for watching and uh, enjoy this, uh, this film festival. Thank, thank you so you much. much. Thank, thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you very much.